Okay. The matter of Yolanda, Evelyn, and Kelly Blair. <coughs> so we finally have all the parties assembled. I knew it was possible, even with flu season and a multiple scheduling conflicts. Uh, Mr. Hebner, would you kick us off? Thank you, Your Honor. DCF got involved with the Blair family three years ago when Janice Blair was arrested for child abuse and possession of narcotics. Since then, Yolanda, Evelyn, and Kelly have been in and out of foster care, and it seems that we now have a situation. But I'm in the middle of a neglect. Here. Sorry, it's Judge Artell's orders. You gotta go. Grab your things. Uh, let's go. What is this? What's, what's, what's going on? Uh, Mr. Cronin has a hearing in Department 5. Mr. Cronin has a hearing here. Sorry, Judge Gray. Let's go. Go with me. He's not too happy right now. Five minute recess. Yeah. God, this is outrageous. Can he just do this? He just did. Bruce Van Exel, Judge Gray CSO. She needs to talk to him. I used to work for Judge Artell. He picks his nose on the bench. I see. I see. He's on the bench. Picking his nose, no doubt. Yeah, this is Judge Gray. What's well, an emergency? Mm hmm. You tell him I need to talk to him right away. He's in session. He won't talk to me. Come on, Bruce. I'm gonna pay a little visit to Judge Artell. You go, girl! I mean, Judge Gray. How dare he disrupt my courtroom? He dares because he's criminal court and a juvenile in the family. So? You haven't noticed that we're the bastard stepchild of the state court system? Let's see about that. So it could not possibly have been my client who accosted Mrs. Grayson at the time of the attack he was attending his son's bar mitzvah. Excuse me, Your Honor. A moment. Who are you? This is Judge Gray, Your Honor. Department C. So, it could not... You disrupted my courtroom, and I would like to know why. Mr. Cronus represents a defendant in an aggravated assault case. He was scheduled to appear in my court before me this morning for trial. Now, I cannot run my court with the defense attorney downstairs in some neglect case. The lives of three children are at stake, Judge Artell. And Mr. Cronus was scheduled to appear in my court. Well, I'm sure you can reschedule your hearing for some of the time, my dear. This arraignment will not wait. Well, neither can these children. I am a superior court judge. Not only have you disrespected me and my court, but you're being arrogant and incredibly short-sighted. If I don't take care of these kids and their problem today, they're going to be your problem tomorrow. Let's go. I wouldn't if I were you, Mr. Cornwell. Now, unless you want to be found in contempt. Which is exactly what's going to happen to you if you leave this courtroom. Uh, I don't think so. I do. I've issued a protective order holding you in my session. So you're mine, Mr. Cronin. Judge Brooks will hear about this. I'll make sure he gets a copy of the order. Last night. What are you looking at? This shell and bogger's trash cans. Huh. Now that the flowers are dead, all I can see is the trash cans. Mommy, when are we gonna get my butterfly costume? Tomorrow night, after work. That's what you said yesterday. Lauren, I'll get you the costume, okay? It's gonna be a cold winter. I hope my Betty Pryors make it. What's a Betty Pryor? A rose. It's pink. I'm not sure I got them into the ground soon enough. Lauren, no bowl of sugar needs that much cereal in it. Mm -hmm. I'm so tired. Maybe I should start taking some vitamins. Try getting some sleep. That might help. Yeah, hey, Lauren, take a shower. Eat fast. We gotta leave early. The roads are gonna be terrible. Try 
to make us seem sort of warm and friendly. But of substantial means. No girl's going to give us her baby if she doesn't think we can support it and put it through college. Honey, that was the problem with our last letter. It sounded like a corporate report. But, honey, we've got to find a way to stand out, and one of our assets is our financial stability. Here's a thought. How about we just write an honest account of who you are and how you feel about being parents? Okay. How about this? Uh, dear birth mother, our dream has always been to have a child. Despite the material comforts of our life, uh, we feel we're missing something essential. That's better. Okay. Oh, hello. Donna, hey, uh, this is my brother and sister-in-law, Peter and Jillian Gray. Oh, Donna Kozlowski Pant. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. I'm a big fan of your whole family. How's your weekend? Great. And Oscar is? Fine. Well, I better go get ready for work. She's the woman who married that guy who hacked his mother to death? Yep. Went to visit him this weekend. Are you still going to sobriety meetings every day? No, no, no. It's got to be every day, well, Mr. Levin. We discussed that. Thanks. Well, I want to hear from you next week. Do you have bye a bye. medical requisition form? I've got a kid who, who's lost his glasses. He can't see without <laughs> Why don't you give him one of yours? What? Maxine, you got a pair on your head and one around your neck. I spent half an hour looking for these. Here you go. Thanks. Good afternoon, ladies. Bad news. Jeff Gilbert just quit. We won't be able to replace him for six months. Oh, no. I have 35 cases already. Now you have 40. Oh, um, this one needs attention immediately. 11-year-old boy picked up for arson three days ago, been in detention ever since, won't give anyone his real name. You need to get down there. Susie, I can barely take care of my cases as it is. Well, Maxine, you're just going to have to cut back on those extra helpful little things you do for your clients. Stick to the bare minimum. Uh, Jane, I really would like to talk to you for What minutes. extra helpful little things? Oh, you know, home visits, parental assessments, meeting your clients face-to-face. -face. What is a grandmother? I'll tell you what she is. She's somebody who still has to work. <laughs> Your Honor, Seth Reynolds, fourth grade physical education teacher, reported seeing welts on Seth's legs two months ago. When he asked Seth what they were, Seth said that they were the result of a spanking that he'd received from his father the day before. The teacher reported this to DCF, and DCF investigated. When I spoke to Seth's father, Dr. Brent Reynolds, he readily admitted to having hit the boy with his belt and said that it was his usual form of discipline. Your Honor, since when has spanking been against the law? And who is DCF to tell parents how to discipline their children? Your Honor, may I say something? Please. I'm a physician. I know the difference between a spanking and child abuse. This whole thing's ridiculous. I love my son. I would never hurt him. Uh, Ms. Feinberg, you uh, said the reports indicated there were welts on the boy? The teacher reported them, but they disappeared by the time we investigated, so I didn't actually see them. This all seems a little thin to me, Mr. McDermott. We're not requesting a change of custody, Your Honor. However, we're concerned that the petition be issued and that parenting issues be addressed in this family. Look, I'm sorry, Your Honor, but I, I, I occasionally spank Seth with the soft end of a belt, and only when he's fully clothed. It is not an act of anger. It is a reasoned response to bad behavior. We contend that Dr. Reynolds' form of discipline is protected by his constitutional right to freedom of religion. Oh, really? And how's that? It's our argument that corporal punishment is an act of love, sanctioned by the Bible. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Well, the Bible also says if your right hand offends you, cut it off. A literal interpretation of the Bible can be a dangerous thing. Your Honor. My son is very well adjusted. He's a straight A student. I make a good income and I, I haven't, I've never so much as had a traffic ticket. Why the heck am I here? You are alleged to have abused your child, Dr. Reynolds. I'm going to appoint a court investigator to uh, talk to all parties involved and report back to me tomorrow. If possible, I'd like to hear from the child, so if you could make the appropriate arrangements, Mr. McDermott. Yes, sir. Next case. He's been in here three days. He gave the police a false name. We have no idea who he is. No missing kid report. Big surprise. We don't know what to do with him. You can't keep him in here indefinitely. That's where you come in. Yeah. And good luck. Wu Tang. This is your social worker, Maxine Gray. Have fun.
Wu Tang, that's an interesting name. I've wanted to change my name on occasion. Between you and me, I've always hated my name. I tried to get people to call me Maxie for a while, but it never really caught on. Why aren't you telling anyone your real name? If I was to hazard a guess, I'd say it's maybe because you don't want to go home. You don't know nothing. If you're having a problem at home, I can help. But you're not going anywhere until we find out who you are. The judge will see to that. Let me try to help. I know you're scared. Donald, don't touch me! Do not touch me! Let me go! Get the boy. Oh. Ma? Ma? Amy, what's wrong? <clears throat> it's 7.30. You okay? You sick? It's 7.30. Oh, God, I'm, I must have forgot to put the alarm on. Well, there's a, there's a call for you. A, a Mrs. Rappaport from detention. She's holding. <clears throat> ah. What? What is that? What? On your... Cheek, is that a bruise? I got up to go to the bathroom and walked into the bedpost. It's nothing. <clears throat> it's terrible. Get you some ice for it. <clears throat> Maxine Gray. Cold front's coming in. I saw it on the weather channel. Huh. Might even snow. Snowing in Albany. There's a snake around your neck. Oh, yeah. This is Chuck. He's a red-tailed boa. <laughs> did, I, I, did I know that you had a snake? Probably not. <laughs> Does your dad hit you, Seth? No. Seth, it's okay to tell me the truth. He spanks me sometimes when I'm bad. Does he hit you with an open hand or a, a closed hand? With an open hand. Or if I really mess up with a belt. How often does that happen? I don't know. A couple times a week. If I don't behave myself in school. Or smart talk my mom or I hit my sister. Stuff like that. Does the spanking leave marks on you? Sometimes. Red ones, but they go away. He only spanks me when he has to. I'm very strong-willed. Do the spankings hurt? The belt does. Do you cry? I try not to. And what happens afterwards? He tells me he loves me. Yeah, he's my brother. Thinks he's bad. Likes to be called Wu-Tang. That's CJ. How old is CJ? I don't know. 11, 12. We don't exactly be having birthday parties at my house. There's seven of us. And nobody noticed he was missing? <sighs> CJ always missing. You were arrested for assault and battery, and it says here you haven't been to school in three months. Where are your parents? Older sister took care of us most of the time. Me and her got in a fight. She messed up pretty bad. She threw us out the house. 
Where have you and, and CJ been staying? Here and there. Sometimes we stay with friends. Sometimes we stay in the park. It gets pretty cold in the park. Okay, Tasha, we're gonna find you and CJ someplace to stay. What about here? I've been here before. I like it. This is just a temporary facility. I think we can do better than this. According to the psych evaluation, Tasha shows the beginning stages of schizophrenia. CJ was diagnosed with oppositional defiance disorder. Which means he's an adolescent. No, these kids are really damaged, Susie. CJ has everything going against him. Suicide attempts, uh, arrest for arson, sexual assault charge pending. Sexual assault? He was discovered having unwanted sexual relations with an unwilling neighbor girl, age eight. Well, that'll make him an easy placement. No, I have I have located a grandmother. I'm hoping to place them there. Maxine, what do you want from me? I need to go and talk to the grandmother, and it might put me a little behind. Use the phone. All I have is an address. Maxine, you have to learn how to prioritize. Prioritize? Well, maybe ten years ago, you could do things at a leisurely pace. Ten years ago, this department was about taking care of children. Ten years ago, I would have fired somebody like you, Miss Nixon. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, I used to take care of them. They all lived with me. But it just got so I couldn't control them. The mother and her drugs, she pretty much left them high and dry. Do you think, with some aid, that you could take care of Tasha and CJ? Well, I could look in on them every now and then. Miss Kettler. They need more than someone to look in on them. They're, they're children. They need a full-time parent or two. Well, I can't have children here. I understand. But your grandchildren are in a detention facility. Are there any relatives, anyone that you can think of that might be willing to care for them? They have a father out there somewhere. What's his name? Jerry, Jerry something. I don't know. Well, uh... Thank you for your time, Miss Kettler. Be sure and give him my love now. I'm sorry, Maxine, but there aren't any beds. There are only two lot psychiatric facilities in the entire state that even accept kids. Fine, let's go outside the state then. We're not going to find anything, especially after the holidays. You did the evaluation, Ernie. You're the one who says they need inpatient care. Yeah, I know, but at least half the kids in detention need inpatient care. That doesn't mean they're going to get it. Oh, Lord, I guess I could put them on a waiting list. They can't wait. They have nowhere to live. They're sleeping in the park. I can't place them in a foster home or group home because of their violent behavior. I have at least 33 cases that are just as pressing, Maxine. I don't know what to tell you. Don't tell me you're going to find them a bed. I can't. Just a moment. For heaven's sake, these are two screwed up crazy kids and no one gives a damn about them. I know they're not very appealing. A 10-year-old sexual predator who sets fires and his violent sister are never going to be foster care poster children. But they need help. Maxine, you have your cases, I have mine. I am so sick of the numbing indifference of this system. I'm not leaving this damn office until you do something. All right. All right, what? All right, just, I'll find your bed. Two beds. In the same facility. All right, I'm sure everyone has a copy of the investigator's report. Uh, he's recommending that a clinical parenting assessment of the Reynolds be undertaken and that Dr. Reynolds be referred to parenting classes. Uh, having read the report and having spoken to Seth myself, I'm adopting these recommendations. I'm giving Dr. Reynolds the opportunity to comply with the plan if he attends the classes, I'm confident that this matter will be over in a few months. This is outrageous, Your Honor. The state has no business telling parents whether they can or can't spank, and you know that. This is a violation of my client's constitutional rights. And on the contrary, Mr. Sweet, the Constitution does not protect parental discipline that threatens the well-being of a child. It is my belief that there is a real risk that this practice could lead to serious injury. May I speak? Of course. I'm sure you're well-intentioned, Your Honor, but... I have to respectfully disagree. I don't believe that I can or will comply with this plan. Well, I'm not asking you to, Dr. Reynolds. I'm ordering you. And I am respectfully refusing to comply. He's my child. I can raise him however I wish. <sighs> Dr. Reynolds, I want to be clear that these are the conditions of your continued legal and physical custody of your son. What? Uh, I don't understand. 
If you do not go to these classes, I will remove Seth from your home and I will place him with a relative or with DCF. I urge you to consider your decision carefully. Your Honor, I've evaluated CJ and Tasha Kettler. They have a history of suicidally acting out. In my opinion, if they're left in the detention facility, there's a real danger they'll decompensate. They are currently a threat to themselves by reason of their mental illness. Your Honor, if I may, Dr. Wolfson and I have found two beds at Lakeview in New London. It's a locked hospital facility, and this has been cleared with our insurance provider. We're asking you to commit the children to this hospital for a period of not more than 10 days to determine whether further hospitalization will be necessary. I ain't going to no hospital. You may not want to go to a hospital, son, but you need to so someone can look after you. You need help. They just give me meds. That's all they do. There are doctors there who will take good care I of I sure as hell ain't taking no meds. I'm going to approve this order. CJ and Tasha Kettler are committed to Lakeview Hospital to determine whether they are dangerous to themselves or others by reason of mental illness. Next case. Get right, off go. me. I ain't hey. taking no meds. Come on down. Get this way. off me. I'm out of here. I gotta pick up Lauren at school. Wait. You want in Judge Brooks Chambers. I don't believe this. Come in. Judge Brooks. Judge Gray. There are some things we need to talk about. For starters, just because I deal with juveniles does not mean that my courtroom should not be afforded the same respect as Judge Artell's. Well, I agree. You do? And when Norman told me about your encounter, I was sympathetic. Please, have a seat, Judge Gray. I admit I was outraged at your audacity. But the more I thought about it, the more I was impressed with you, Hutzpah. Really? Yeah. Norman was so impressed, he suggested our criminal division could benefit from your passion and spunk. I don't understand. Judge Pilkington is due to retire at the end of this month, which means there'll be an opening in his courtroom. How'd you like to be the one to fill it? You mean permanently? All of our appointments are for at least a year. And why would I want to do that? The criminal department is a big step up from kitty court. No, oh, it has more stature. Lawyers are better. You'll be doing jury trials. Well, I, I'm flattered. I think uh, it's just all a little sudden. It's the difference between doing social work and embarking on a serious judicial career. It's up to you. We're closing. Well, good. We're here just in time, then. What do you need? Uh, my daughter is in Miss Twombly's class at Danceworks. We're here to pick up the, the costume for the recital. Butterfly or ladybug? Butterfly! Size? Six. I want to be a ballerina dancer when I grow up. Really? I thought you wanted to be a doctor or a judge. You know, ballerinas get to wear all the cool clothes. Yeah, you got a point. Sorry, there are no more blue butterflies. What? So the last one a week ago. They don't have any more? Uh, come on, you have to have enough costumes for all the butterflies in the class. Stock varies. I knew it! I told you, Mommy! I told you we had to get that costume! Now I can't be in the recital! <laughs> look, look, is there, is there any way you could order another one for me? I'll pay extra for the shipping. Take six weeks. Well, this is ridiculous. There's, there's got to be something we can do. Do, do, do. do you have any costumes that kind of, kind of look like a blue butterfly? Nope. But you could make one yourself. There's a costume pattern for it. Make it. Mom, the oven timer went off. What's she doing out there? I don't know. She's obsessed with her garden lately. It has something to do with the Schellenberger's trash cans. 
This isn't the same color as everyone else's costume. Well, it's close enough. Do you know that Donna has a snake? A real snake? Yeah, one that eats real live rats. Its name is Chuck. I told you to get it last week. I told you I was sorry, Lauren. It's gonna be fine. No, it's not. You don't know how to sew. You won't do a good job. She's punishing me. She eats tuna out of the can for breakfast. Oh. Donna. She's obsessed with the Weather Channel. Talks about it incessantly. Well, at least we'll know what to wear. I don't think it's gonna work out. I know this one, Vincent. Put the fabric back, please. I'm thinking of pulling out the old sugar maple. It's looking bent, a little tired. Why do you always forget everything? Oh, Lauren, I mean it. I'm thinking about putting in some Andromeda and Lenten roses. Just round the border. Ma, can we just um, not talk about the garden right now? That's all right. I'm interested in my garden. You don't have to be. Mom? In the kitchen. Mom? Everybody? This is Evie. Hi. Evie is considering us as adoptive parents for her baby. Oh. Well, isn't that nice? Yeah, I really like the letter that they wrote. She especially liked the whole extended family thing, so we brought her by kind of spur of the moment. Lauren, would you like to stay for supper? Yeah, okay, that's cool. You're a bad mommy and I hate you. You ruined my life. Lauren! That's it, you go to your room right now. And you stay up there. I don't want to hear from you the rest of the night. Good. Hey, <laughs> none of you have children. Try it sometime. Let me know how well you do. Welcome to the family, Evie. Warren. I told you I was sorry about the costume, and I, and, I, and I was wrong to yell at you, but you have to understand something. I am not your servant. I am a human being, and you are not allowed to talk to me like that ever. I am your mother. No matter how wrong or bad you think I am, you have to treat me with respect, just like I treat you with respect. I don't call you names or say mean things to you. Dress rehearsal is tomorrow, and I'll be the only one without a costume. No, you won't. I'm going to make it for you tonight if you stop whining. You know, there are kids out there who don't know what a dance class is. But it's going to look different. No, it's not. It's going to look the same. I promise. But you always promise stuff. You promised you would order the costume last week. You promised you would drive for the museum field trip. You I promised... do the best I can, Lauren. I am not perfect. But I'm the only mom you got, so live with it. So, uh, so when are you due? Uh, Evie. I'll get it. Oh? Evie had an ultrasound last week. We need to talk. Uh, just going to the living room. Must be interesting. Be in in a minute. Does the father of your baby know that you're planning to give him up? Mother? Maxine. Well, somebody has to ask that question. What's up? That's great. Um... Look, I, I, I thought we had the type of relationship where you can tell me the truth. What are you talking about? I hear you're going to the criminal court. Oh, really? <laughs> and that's why you felt compelled to come to my house at 8 o'clock at night? Look, I, I just wanted you to know that I'm not going with you. I don't do criminal courts. I can see where it might be more appealing to you career-wise, but you have to do it without me. I'm sorry. You came all the way over here just to tell me that? I sure in the hell did. I mean, I... I no, never mind. Bruce, Bruce. I haven't made up my mind yet. Naturally, I would have talked to you before I made a move. I appreciate that. Just out of curiosity, why wouldn't you consider working in criminal court? This is the area of law I chose. I thought you felt the same way. I was assigned to juvenile matters as a new judge. I never had a choice. You have a choice now. The coast clear? Vincent said we made quite a first impression. Well, the whole, whole thing was absurd. Auditioning to be someone's family. Well, what's absurd about it? It happens all the time. There's something wrong with it. All those unattached children floating around out there. It would be easier if you cut it all out first. It's fine, Ma. You're just starting this now. It's 10 o'clock. 
Well, I promised Lauren I'd do it. When was the last time you sewed anything? Eighth grade. Oh, Mac. I made a halter top. How hard can it be? I can read directions. All right. Okay, I'll do it. I don't want you to do it. It's going to take you all night. I can just whip it up in an hour. I'd like to do it myself. It's kind of fun. Well, it's not going to be fun when it looks terrible. Well, it's not going to look terrible. Why won't you let me help you? Because I don't need your help. Ma, I've had a tough day, and it's going to be a long night. So I'd really appreciate it if you weren't standing there criticizing my sewing skills. Oh, I'm sorry you had a tough day, Amy. But you know something? So did I. Sorry, Ma. I, I know you were trying to help. It's just become too damn hard. What? Everything. Life. The job. The people. It's, it's harder than it used to be. And I don't mind saying that. Too many cases and too much unhappiness. People are rude. Nothing works. Nobody cares. It's... The job hurts more than it used to. And I'm tired. <laughs> and I... Maybe I shouldn't be doing it anymore. That's ridiculous. Of course you should. It's always been this way. Amy, you have been doing this job for three minutes. You have no idea what I'm talking oh, that's about. that's right. I forgot. I just sit in the court all day working my butt off for families and children, but I really don't know anything. I'm sure you're a fine judge. Yeah, I am. I'm a damn good judge. And if you came to my court, you'd see what I do every day. But you don't come. <laughs> You've never even seen me on the bench. Not once. You have never invited me. I shouldn't have to invite you. I... <clears throat> I am sorry that you've had a bad day, but it's a little hard to come home and listen to this after I've had to slog through it myself all day. It doesn't make me feel any better about what I do. It's not my job to make you feel better. out here I'm trying to wake up her costume is beautiful thanks I just finished it I had to rip out and resew that waistband three times to get it straight that's still not perfect nothing's perfect I've been thinking about this sugar maple I don't think you should get rid of it no I mean, sure, it's, it's bent and overgrown, but it's been through a lot. It's where Daddy hung the swing. Peter had his clubhouse there. It's part of this family. You really think so? Yeah. I do. Well, maybe you're right. Let's get some coffee. Mm -hmm. Mom. Yeah. What do you think about spanking? I think you're a little old for it now. Seriously. Uh, uh, love and uh, hitting are antithetical in my book. Of course, that's just me. You can't quit your job, Ma. I can do anything I want, thank you. Kids would suffer if you weren't there. Oh, kids suffer whether I'm there or not. Ma. Every day when I was growing up, I watched you. I knew you were doing something important. And now every day, 
when I'm on the bench fighting for kids. It's because of you. No other reason. Yeah, it's... It's harder now. It's a harder world. It just means we have to fight harder. That's all. visit wasn't so great. In fact, Oscar, he didn't... It wouldn't... No, 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 yeah, no, no, I, I, I get the picture. Uh, huh. You know, um, Amy is, is really good at, at, at this sort of thing. Maybe, maybe you should talk to Oh, her. I couldn't talk to Judge Gray. She's my mentor, my boss. Anyway, what is there to say? I don't rev Oscar's engine. <laughs> Donna, um... This kind of thing happens to guys all the time. Really? I mean, look, look, look at Oscar. The guy hasn't had sex in, in what? In years. It's a lot of pressure. I guess. Next time, he'll probably be fine. What if he's never able to? Can you have a fulfilling relationship with someone you can't have sex with? Um, well, uh, some people have done it. Members of the royal family, for instance. Has it ever happened to you, Vincent? I mean, not being able to, you know. Um, the, 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 uh, the, the point is, um, it's entirely normal. A man is not a machine. But, but you, has it ever happened to you? I mean, you're the kind of guy who sees lots of girlfriends. If you're saying it's happened to you, that would sure make me feel a lot better. Um, uh, uh, okay, just between us. Uh, yeah, that has, it has happened to me. Once. Uh, had had a, a little bit too much to drink, and, um, well, it, you know, we, uh, that's, that's not important. Um, the, the important thing is, is, uh, the, uh the, it's, it's not a big deal. Thank you, Vincent. I really feel we've shared something here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. Are you certain you've given this your full consideration? Yes, I am. It's not how careers are made. Besides, if the current trend continues, juvenile court may not even exist in five years. Well, I think that would be a big mistake. Amy, to be perfectly frank, you were assigned to juvenile matters because it's a job no one wants. Well, I think I do want it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's kitty court. And they're just children, but they're also potential adults. Kids are kids for such a short time, and then they're adults forever. Sometimes I see them before it's too late. In criminal court, it's always going to be too late. I can't promise you that a chance like this will come along again, Judge Gray. Well, it's a risk I'll have to take. All rise. To 
here's the code section you were looking for. By the way, I'm, I'm glad you're staying. Dr. Reynolds, have you made up your mind? Are you going to comply with my order to attend parenting classes or risk losing custody of your child? Judge Gray, I, um, I have decided to comply with your order, but I must say, I resent very much the state's intrusion into what should be a private family matter. Given the climate of the times, however, I, uh, I'm certainly not going to risk losing my child over some spurious definition of abuse. My wife, Jenny, and I are the best parents we know. And, and Seth is a wonderful kid, you know, and, and we take some credit for that. And as far as we're concerned, you can reason and cajole all you want. But a spanking is worth a thousand words. Dr. Reynolds, each year 2,000 children die at the hands of their parents. Thousands more are permanently disabled. Maybe from your perspective, my mandate seems extreme. But every day I see children who have been seriously injured by their parents under the guise of discipline. I'm sure you believe you would never injure Seth. But what you did to your son would be considered battery had you done it to another adult. In our society, we are not allowed to go around willy-nilly hitting people unless there are children, and then we call it discipline. Under the Eighth Amendment, we can't even take a strap to prison inmates, and yet there's no law against you hitting your son with a belt several times a week. He's 10 years old and less than half your size. Think about that. What are you teaching him about love? You can't teach your child respect without respecting him. Yeah. Our children are not our property, Dr. Reynolds. And I believe we as a society pay a heavy price for treating them as such. We have to do better. So this case is continued for review and determination of whether you've complied with my conditions of custody. Next case. That's my daughter. 